Would you believe it? This is podcast 48 of the 3.0. I This week, I've had the topic come up of communication. Uh, boy. I, no, there was a, a... I mean, I saw communication... I mean, if you follow my Instagram, there was a, a communication error thing that I saw and... I snapped a photo of it, but just never got it to Instagram. That that wasn't too long ago, but it's been in the works. And finally, it just keeps like, I need to put that thing up on Instagram. I think it's prophetic. I think that's a computer monitor. It's got Chinese across the bottom that I don't know what it says. I could find out, but it it, it it's, looks like some pretentious message. Like, I don't know, you know, you know get whatever here. So I... Took a picture, of it, but in English it says communication error, and so it's like Chinese on the bottom, communication error in English. It's like you got that right. You know, I mean, you know, the people who need to read the communication error message don't understand it because it's in English, and the people who can understand the message don't know what the sign says in Chinese. And it's just like, I, it just, it's not, it's not bad. I'm not blaming anybody. It's just, I think it's prophetic because if you look, if you look around at what's happening with North Korea. I've been saying this. The North Korean situation is prophetic to our situation today. What we're seeing in North Korea is the whole earth. And I mentioned this a while ago. Uh, This was, it it might have been a prophecy that I posted. I don't usually post prophecies because I don't like to be the prophet. But when I get one that's for the world, I put it up and I might have put it up. In fact, I think I submitted it to a prophecy blog type thing and I don't know if it actually went through or not. But I, there is... Well, not don't go... Look, if you want to know what I mean by prophecy, you're going to have to go do your homework. I'm not going to do it for you. You, you know, everyone should know what prophecy is. It's just a messenger thing. And... Uh, there's genre to it. Go get the Jack Deere has some books on prophecies. Deere, I think it's Deere with an E, almost as if he's British, but he's American. Uh, I think it's like Understanding the Gift of Prophecy. It's a smaller book. He's got a few books. This is one of the smaller ones and one of the later ones. Uh, although it's at least ten, maybe pushing fifteen years old. Okay, but I I believe that that there are clear messages. I mean, this past week, IHOP KC, this lady, uh, her name was Naomi. Uh, I think it's Jay Thomas's wife. Jay Thomas, he's an African-American worship leader at IHOP KC. And I say African-American not to be politically correct, but to be technical. I don't say black because that includes a lot. I'm very, very technical in my speech, but not don't mean to be politically correct. So sorry if that offends you, really. Uh, we, we haven't had... Uh, we, we should have a meeting on, on what to call who. I think you can call me white. I don't, I don't, you know what? I don't care what people call me. Call me whatever you want, whatever works for you. I think of myself as Jesse and I think of you as you. But if you want to have a meeting and deliberate about what to call you, uh, I'll be happy to, to look at that if, if time permits. Otherwise, tell me your decision and I'll just follow your, your format. But for me, I don't care what you call me. But anyhow, so Naomi was talking about racism and resentment and grudges and not just those things, but just in general, people fighting, people not, you know, people thinking that they're better than other people, people not being unified. She was talking about a great number of things this past weekend in her, in her talk at IHOP KC on Thanksgiving weekend, 2017. But the message has been all over the place and I've seen it. And I really believe Korea is a prophetic portrait, a prophetic message to the world of all the world's problems and how we need to be looking at it and how God deals with the problem in Korea, both North and South. And this is the thing with, with the Southern Korea, the, 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 the president in the South, I, I, I call it Southern Korea because as of the last maybe year, I've thought of Korea already as one country because I live in the world of tomorrow. As far as I'm concerned, About a year ago, maybe the last two years, Korea has already been one country in Jesse world. So I sometimes I'll call it Southern. I know it's South Korea and North Korea, but I I view it as North and South, and it's all it's just Korea to me. It's been that way for a while. So you look at the at the president in the South, 
And he's got grudge stuff going on. I, I, I put about, you know, grudge, G-R-U-D-G-E, is it grudge? like anger stuff going on. I, I mentioned that at the Times, Pacific Daily Times today. But the thing is, this is a picture for the whole world. You know, there's this idea, I think it was the movie Kill Bill. Uh, it was Bud's friend, I think in the second movie, or volume two, I think it was. He, he said, well, white women call this the silent treatment. And we let them think we don't like it. You know, it's, you may think that the silent treatment punishes other people as if to assume that other people somehow depend on a steady supply of your words, but maybe other people don't depend on a steady supply of your words, and maybe not talking to someone doesn't hurt them at all. Not only does it not hurt them as much as you think it does, it doesn't hurt them at all. In fact, it might even liberate them. If you're the type of person that thinks other people depend on your words as if your words are some commodity and if you cut off your words, you will somehow do them harm as if imposing some sort of a blockade on trade or something. You are probably, if that's you, the type of person that they will be better off with not hearing from. But there's a bigger problem here. If, if you or anyone, person A gives person B the silent treatment. What that means, it cuts off communication. I don't like what you're saying. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to answer the phone. I'm not going to receive my registered mail. I'm not, I'm not going to answer the door. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to read my email. When someone does that to someone else, that, that person's delegating decisions to that someone else. Person A doesn't talk to person B. That means person B can do whatever you want, whatever he wants, excuse me. And person A automatically accepted those results, whether he meant to or not. If you, if you, if you close communication, it's, George, don't interrupt. I'm not talking to you right now. I don't want to talk to you if I don't want to. So there, huh? All right. Now, where was I about not tuning people out? Okay. I, so I, you know, I don't know. That's the thing. A lot of people don't realize that by giving someone the silent treatment, if you're trying to hurt them or, or shutting someone down, if you want to just do whatever you want. No, 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 no. When someone tunes someone out, you tune someone else out, someone else tunes you out, the tuner outer, the person hanging up does not put themselves in a position of greater strength. They put themselves in great harm because that other person can go do whatever he wants and, and, and the guy who hung up the phone won't know. I hope that person isn't you who hangs up the phone. So I, that's, just, that's just really, 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 really basic. I never permanently closed any door on anyone. I mean, if you know, call me Machiavellian, but I lose the ability to spy on him. I mean, that's, that's not really my thinking, but that's kind of a, you know, twisted way of explaining it. You, you don't know what other people are doing when you don't talk to them. And we're seeing that on display in North Korea, but folks, folks, friends, family, fellow countrymen, that's not how you want to live. We're seeing it all over in our relationships. You know what's happening in North Korea happens in your own life somewhere. Make sure that you're not the hermit because what's about to happen to him is about to happen all over the world. God's going to deal with it all. And I should probably get to the point. We never know what we don't know. If someone wants to talk, listen. Cult think mentality easily fills our fears with mental constipation. They want to sell you snake oil, it says. Don't let him speak. He will cast a spell on all who hear. Cult think never solves problems. If someone wants to talk, listen. There is no good reason not to listen. They may want to warn, defect, apologize, or even attack again, but it doesn't matter how evil they are or have proven to always ever be. If someone wants to talk, listen for one reason. You're not telepathic. And that's the point. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com. <laughs>